Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a unique tablet from Acer. They call this one the Chromebook Tab 10, and it's called a Chromebook because it is running Chrome OS, but you can also install Android apps on it too. We've got the Google Play Store up here right now. We're going to be taking a closer look at this Chromebook and what makes it so unique in just a minute. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and take a look at what this tablet is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. These sell for about $320 or so new. Uh, this one I picked up for a little less than that used on eBay. Uh, but it was a good deal, so I grabbed one so you could see what it's all about. 9.7 inch display on this one. It's an IPS display with nice viewing angles. It's also a high DPI display because the resolution is 2048 by 1536 or 264 pixels per inch. And as a result, things look really nice and sharp on here, both the text and the photos, uh, similar to what you might find on an iPad uh, with their Retina display. So they did a nice job overall with that. Inside, it's got a Rockchip RK3399 processor. Uh, this is the same chip we saw in the Asus Chromebook Flip we looked at a few months ago. I'll put a review link uh, down below so you can check that out. It really performs about the same that that one does, including support for Linux apps, which we'll talk about a little later in the review here. It has four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. It weighs about 1.2 pounds or 544 grams. It's all plastic though, so I don't really suggest dropping this, uh, which I wouldn't suggest anyhow, but you certainly don't wanna drop this one. I think it might uh, be prone to some damage just given it doesn't feel the sturdiest uh, design here that I have seen. Now, battery life on this one, we estimate to be about nine hours, and that is assuming you're doing uh, the basics here like web browsing and email and that sort of thing. When you start branching out into Android apps and into Linux apps, uh, things will change because those typically will uh, hit the processor a lot harder than a web browsing session will. So the uh, usage will vary based on what your individual activities are with the device. That's one of the cool things about Chrome OS is that it's really developing in a nice way and they're doing a lot on what are essentially mobile processors like what's in here. So you've got Android access, Chrome access, and now Linux too. And I think it's just such a great platform, but the really cool stuff will probably eat into that battery a bit more, especially as those things are still working their way through the beta process at the time that I'm recording this video. Now there are not many ports on here, but one of them is very interesting. Before we get to that interesting port, there are some other standbys that we usually look for. Uh, one is the micro SD card slot on here to augment its onboard storage. So if you have media or other stuff you want to carry around with you, you can snap a card inside of that slot there and get a little more storage. You have a volume rocker here and a standby switch. On the top is a traditional headphone microphone jack there, but there's also a built-in microphone for conferencing and that sort of thing. You do have a pair of stereo speakers. There's one on this side and one on the other side here at the bottom. They don't sound all that great, but you do get some stereo separation out of it. Uh, what's funny though is the orientation of them. So this one is on the bottom here on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, it's over towards the top. There's nothing on this side of the tablet, but at the bottom uh, is this USB-C port. And this is a full service port, so you can actually connect up displays and have power going in at the same time, as well as using additional USB devices. You can actually hook up a USB-C dock to this thing and get off and running with it. Uh, we're gonna show you how that port works in a little bit. I wanna show the performance of this first because there are some uh, caveats with uh, this particular tablet and how it acts as a desktop when it is plugged in. Uh, it's mostly related to some Chrome OS bugs at the moment, and I wanna spend some time on that. So we're gonna come back to that port and show you how all of that works in just a second. But first I want to show you some basic performance examples here. We've got the nasa.gov website up, and as you can see, it is pretty uh, smooth to scroll around on it. Uh, pages do seem to render relatively quickly on here too, so it is a, a very nice browsing experience. This is something we've seen on other Rockchip powered devices like this one. It really is a very snappy and a high performing kind of web browser here, at least for doing casual types of tasks. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 39.4 on the 1.0 version of that test. 
along with 22.81 on version 2.0 that came right in line with what we saw out of the Asus Chromebook Flip that we looked at a few months ago. Uh, that, of course, is powered by the same processor, and it actually does better than what we saw on the Acer Chromebook 11 running with an Intel processor. So these chips are very well tuned for the kinds of things that you will do with a Chromebook at this price point. And it also does a nice job with Android apps, including many casual Android games. So we have uh, Crossy Road here running at uh, full screen at a very decent frame rate here. It looks nice and sharp and uh, no real issues with uh, slowdown or anything else like that. So not too bad of an experience here to play these kinds of games. Uh, we've seen in the past that uh, some of the Android arcade and video game emulators all seem to work pretty well on here too. Usually around the 8 and 16 bit era is what I recommend. So generally it's a not a bad little replacement for Android as a tablet platform because you get uh, all the functionality that uh, you want out of a Chrome OS device along with uh, the ability to play some of these Android apps as well. So I thought that was uh, fairly well executed on here as it has been with other Chrome OS devices. And they keep making improvements to Android too. There are some glitches that you'll encounter. So for example, if we try to change the screen orientation, that might mess everything up here for a while, as you can see. So uh, there's certain things that don't execute all that well just yet, but as long as you uh, start the, the game in a certain screen orientation, it should hold still. Uh, but again, there are some glitches that you'll encounter here along the way. And we also got an Android gaming benchmark test to run on here. We got a score of 1,247 on the 3D Mark Slingshot test. It's very close to what we saw on the Chromebook Flip running with the same processor. The score looks a little bit higher, but when you dig into the numbers there, you can see they are very similar in overall performance. So it's pretty much kind of a mid to low end Android tablet in how it performs, but you do of course have uh, the flexibility of many different operating systems now that you can run on this device. And another thing you might want to explore when you're running Android apps are things that might make use of a stylus because there is a stylus built into the Chromebook here on the bottom. You can pull it out like so. It's not the most comfortable stylus out there. It's a bit of a square thing, but it does seem to work uh, fairly well at basic stylus applications. So I can go in here and uh, maybe load up Incredible, uh, which is an app that some folks have been using on the Android platform here. And uh, let's get into it here and just start writing some stuff on here. I did find that it does a pretty decent job of wrist detection as well. The stylus doesn't seem to have too much latency there. It's not going to match what you might see on an iPad Pro or on the uh, Windows platform, but it does uh, work fairly well. It's really secured quite nicely on the bottom of the tablet, and it's always with you too. And uh, by and large, I found the tablet experience to be usable on here. And they've also integrated some stylus input into the Chrome OS operating system when you're on web pages and other uh, Chrome based things. And if you go into the keyboard here and you hit on these little dots at the bottom, you can switch over to stylus mode. And what you can do is just write things out and it will recognize your handwriting and give you some different options there. And you can just uh, click on the word you want. It will uh, insert that. There's a little space bar icon next to it. And as you write, it just kind of guesses at what you're doing and you can go ahead and usually get your uh, text inserted there and move on. Not always the most efficient way to input stuff, but if you don't want to poke at the screen too much with your stylus and would rather write things out, uh, there is a mechanism for doing that. There are also at the bottom of the screen here, let me just get rid of the keyboard for a second. Uh, there is a stylus option here at the bottom where you can do things like capture a region of the screen, for example. So I can uh, maybe grab this and do a quick screenshot, which will save into my uh, photo album, for example. Uh, there's also the ability to just to copy it to the clipboard. I can even jump into this and uh, put some annotations on it. So it's going to load up that image I just did and I can circle this and say, fix it. Uh, and kind of move on from there. So there's some cool stuff that you can do here with the stylus, both on the Android side, but also on the Chrome OS side of the device. Now, I do want to talk about, though, what happens when you try to plug a keyboard or mouse into this thing, because unfortunately, it looks like this is kind of a unique device in the Chrome OS lineup. And right now, it's not working all that well when you're trying to switch in and out of some kind of desktop mode uh, with other input devices. So let's explore that. We're going to start with the USB-C port and then we'll look at maybe a Bluetooth keyboard too. All right, so I've got the tablet out here on a stand in landscape mode. We've got power going into this adapter from the Acer power adapter, HDMI out to the monitor here, and I've got a dongle for this keyboard trackpad combo here. 
And I'm just going to plug this in to the USB-C port on the tablet, and it just started charging, so we're getting power in. I am getting a low power warning, though, when I do attach that. And then the display comes up here. It looks a little washed out on camera, but it actually looks uh, good, like this display typically looks. But you'll notice here that the display orientation on the tablet is not responding to moving it around here. It's not automatically readjusting itself. And I found the solution is to go into the settings and then go over to orientation 90. And what this will do is set this tablet now for whenever it is plugged in. Uh, so if I disconnect the cable here, it will revert back most of the time to tablet mode. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. Uh, so I'll pull this out here. Uh, one thing that I did notice it do is basically sit at a dark screen for uh, sometimes up to a minute before it comes back on. So it's very slowly switching out of this desktop mode uh, back to tablet mode. When it does finally come back, uh, it does seem to work fine as a tablet, but it just feels not complete to me. That's why I was uh, mentioning it was so quirky here. You can see now it's properly uh, getting the screen oriented. Uh, it's back into its tablet mode where everything is full screen, but again, it takes it a while to get back into that mode. And if I were to, for example, maybe uh, try to plug it in while we're in a landscape orientation, uh, it's now going to uh, flip the screen basically to what I had set up before as you can see so it's not going to again smartly know the position of the screen. I had a bigger issue though with Bluetooth keyboards. Let's take a look at that. All right so I've got this Bluetooth keyboard trackpad combo here. I'm going to pair this up now and once it connects, let me just type in the code here, um, once it connects it's going to once again put this tablet into the desktop mode and you can see it reverted it to the screen setting I had earlier. So let me just flip it back around here. Uh, so what's cool is that I can actually operate this as a desktop now. My mouse pointer is upside down. It's really a little cr crazy right now how this thing is not working properly. Uh, and then what will happen here is that even if I uh, disconnect Bluetooth completely, so for example if I go here and just turn off Bluetooth, uh, it stays in this desktop mode. So it becomes really difficult to operate the tablet because all of those tablet features we were uh, running with before, like the auto screen orientation and the full screen, uh, all of that stuff goes away. Even the power button here doesn't work properly. I can only just turn off the tablet completely. I can't put it back to sleep. And there's really no way to extract it out of this mode after you connect up a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. It just stays in this until you reboot it again. Uh, and that was a little problematic for me. But one thing that did work very well on here are Linux apps. Uh, this is one of the Chrome devices that supports this new Crostini feature, which boots up a Linux container on your Chrome OS device, and you can install a bunch of stuff and run it, and it did work fairly well. Uh, the one issue I ran into, though, is that when you have the tablet in tablet mode, which means everything is running in full screen, uh, it does have an issue with apps that use multiple windows like GIMP, uh, which often puts your tools up on these little side windows. I was putting all of those tool windows up as full screen windows. I had to switch back and forth to go back and forth on those things. So when I got the Bluetooth keyboard connected, it reverted back to desktop mode that supports uh, windowing essentially, and that app uh, did run a little better for me. But overall, the performance of the Linux applications is fairly close, almost identical to what I experienced on the Chromebook Flip. And you can see more about that in a video I posted a few weeks ago that details the Linux feature in more detail if you're curious about how things work. So you definitely want to get this tablet out of tablet mode when you're doing that Linux stuff uh, so that you can get multiple windows and everything else going on it. I believe there is a way to disable tablet mode on these tablets, but you have to dig into some of the uh, extra settings there to do that. There's no consumer option just to cl click a box at the moment to get that working properly. But altogether, I think it's a fairly nice Chrome tablet. I really like where things might go uh, with Chrome OS, especially as it relates to Android and Linux applications. And I am pretty optimistic about uh, the shift here in Google's focus to making larger tablets running Chrome OS because it really is going to uh, give us a lot of opportunity for some really lightweight but very functional computing in the very near future. Android, Linux, Chrome OS, all on a, a fairly low powered and low cost device is pretty exciting. This is a little on the expensive side now, especially when you can pick up a Windows device like the Surface Go for around the same price. But if you are really interested 
in where Chrome OS is headed, and you can pick up one of these for 300 bucks used or something, give it a shot. I think it's something really fun to play with, and I think a real window into what the future of portable computing might be from Google. Lots more to see on this, I'm sure, in the future. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.